Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, I'm going to discuss the row space and the column space of a matrix. So let's begin by setting up a matrix. Let's say that A is the matrix 1, 0, 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 7, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 1. So let's take this matrix, and I want to talk about the row space of A and the column space of A. So what is the row space? The row space of A it's the span of the three vectors in this particular example that we see as the rows of A. So it would be the span of the three vectors 1, 0, 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 7, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 1. Negative 2, 1, negative 1, 1. So the span of these three vectors, that's the row space of the matrix. It's the span of the rows. We think of the rows of the matrix as being vectors, in this particular example, vectors in R4. So we have the span of these three vectors in R4. This will be a subspace of R4. Now, it's the span of three vectors so it's at most three-dimensional. It's at most a three-dimensional subspace of R4. It could be less because these vectors might be linearly dependent. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the column space of A, that would be the span of the columns. Now we think of the columns as being vectors. The columns would be vectors in R3. So it would be the span of 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, 1. 2, 4, negative 1, and 3, 7, 1. So it will be the span of these four vectors, and this will be a subspace of R3. The column space is the span of the columns, and that will be a subspace in this example of R3. So we have four vectors. In R3, their span can't actually be more than three-dimensional, even though there are four vectors, because R3 itself is only three-dimensional. But it could be, uh, this could be two-dimensional or one-dimensional, depending on just exactly what the linear dependencies are between these vectors. And that's what we're going to explore. Uh, the number I want here actually is zero. Let me just change that number to a zero. Negative two, one, zero, one. I want that number to be a zero. Two, four, zero. Okay, so uh, the way we're going to discover exactly which of these rows or which of these columns are linearly independent uh, is to find the row echelon form of the matrix A. So the first one on the first row, I'll use that as a leading one. And the second row, I'm going to leave that alone as well. That's a good leading one. So I'm going to use this one to get rid of that negative two. So I'm going to multiply this row by two and add it to this one. So two plus negative two is zero. Zero plus one is one. Uh, two of those added to zero makes four, and two of those added uh, to uh, one makes seven. And now you can see why I made that little change. This is what I wanted to happen. The third row is exactly the same as the second row. I shouldn't put an equal sign here. That's a, we used some elementary row operations there. We did, we added twice row one to row three. Twice row one got added to row three and placed in row three. And now we will subtract uh, 
row 3 minus row 2 will go in row 3. And so row 3 will get zeroed out. And now this is the row echelon form uh, of our matrix. In fact, it's re reduced row echelon form, although that's, it's not necessary to have reduced row echelon form in order to answer the question of what is the row space. Uh, so what we see is that essentially because that's a row of zeros at the bottom and we didn't interchange any, the bottom row was a, a linear combination of the top two. And so the row space being the span of these three rows is really the same as the span of these three rows. So this is the span of simply 1, 0, 2, 3 and 0, 1, 4, 7. And notice that the dimension of the row space is 2. These two vectors are linearly independent and they will form a basis for the row space. Uh, now for the column space, we could look at this same matrix, but since we did row operations, uh, we shouldn't rely on the columns of this matrix at all. Uh, instead, what we do is the leading ones in the row echelon form act as pointers to the columns of the original matrix, which are linearly independent. So the first column and the second column were independent vectors. So the span uh, of the four columns is really the same as the span of just the first and second columns. So the span of those two vectors, it's a two-dimensional subspace. The dimension of the column space is equal to two. Uh, it's a two-dimensional subspace of R3. And actually, it's not a surprise that the dimension of the row space is equal to the dimension of the column space. That always happens. That's a theorem. It says uh, the dimension of the row space is equal to the dimension of the column space. And these numbers themselves, the dimension of the row space, is sometimes called the row rank of the matrix. And here, this number, the dimension of the column space, is often referred to as the column rank of the matrix. And these are equal, and they are called just the rank of the matrix, the rank of A. Uh, <clears throat> One other small fact. Um, another theorem actually says that the rank of A plus what's called the nullity of A, the nullity being uh, the null space of the matrix A. In other words, the solutions to the homogeneous system AX equals zero. This will be a subspace and it will have dimension equal to number of columns of A minus the rank. So the rank plus the nullity will equal the number of columns of A. So in this particular case, A had four columns. The rank is two, because the dimension of the column space or the row space, they're two. So in this example, the nullity, the dimension of the solution 